Hello, I hope everyone had a fun snow day yesterday, and I hope you're ready to get back to school and learn about, finish our um, Black History um, unit. So we were learning about Harriet Tubman and the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln. Now we're gonna jump ahead and learn about some um, civil rights leaders during the civil rights movement. So today we're gonna to learn about Martin Luther King Jr. Who was Martin Luther King Jr.? Can you imagine a world where laws kept black and white people apart? Where black children couldn't swim in the same pools as white children? Or go to the same schools? a place where laws made it hard for black people to vote, or where a black person had to stand up on a bus so a white person could sit down. This world was real, and it happened in the United States. So we have some words to know. Civil rights, the rights that all people in the U.S. have to be treated as equals. And this is a... Um, this picture, statues at the National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, Tennessee. Martin Luther King Jr. worked hard to change rules so they would be the same for whites and blacks. He didn't do it by fighting. He helped change unfair laws by making people think. He did it by making people feel. He did it with his words. Lots of black people and white people helped Dr. King protest those laws. This made many people angry because they didn't want change. But in the end, the protesters won and the rules changed forever. So protest, to say you don't agree with something. And protesters, people who protest are called protesters. When protesters want unfair things changed, they sometimes march to show others that they do not agree with what is happening. And here is Dr. King as he marches in a protest. Growing up, Dr. King was born in 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was named after his father. He was called M.L. Small but strong, M.L. rode bikes with his brother and sister. M.L.'s father was the minister of a church. He taught his children to stand up for what is right. He taught them to speak out against what is wrong. He taught them that all people deserve justice, which means that they should be treated fairly. So, um, a fact, M.L.'s boyhood home on Auburn Avenue in Atlanta is open to the public. And, and here it is right here. And this is a picture. Um, ML's father was a minister at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. When he was six, ML's best friend told him he was no longer allowed to play with ML. Why? Because ML was black and his friend was white. Segregation. Laws were meant to keep black and, and white people apart. They kept kids apart too. ML felt bad. Why wasn't he good enough to play with his friend? Segregation means keeping someone or something apart from others. And back in those times, they called African Americans colored and this is showing them where they could, a waiting room where they could wait. And here, this movie theater had a separate rear entrance for blacks. And so you can see they had to go in this way. ML's mother told him he was just as good as anybody else. And she told him the world was wrong. He wiped his tears. Then ML promised that one day he would change the world. And here's a picture of his family, his father, his mother, grandmother, 
there's Martin Luther King Jr. and his sister Christine and his brother Alfred Daniel. Change for Peace. Martin Luther King Jr. received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. At that time, he was the youngest person ever to ha have received it. He was just 35 years old. Nobel Peace Prize, an important award given for outstanding word work toward peace. And here's a picture of what the medal looks like. And here he is receiving the award. In his time, Martin Luther King Jr. was a boy in the late 1930s. Many things were different from how they are today. Transportation. Most people still traveled by horse and buggy. Only some people were lucky enough to have cars. Cities. Some of New York City's famous skyscrapers were finished in the 1930s. Two of them are the Empire State Building and the Rockefeller Center, and this is the Empire State Building. Money. Candy bars cost about a penny. That doesn't sound like much, but dollars and pennies were worth a lot more back then. U.S. Events. Many people did not have jobs dur during this time called the Great Depression. Most people have very little money. Toys and free time. Children played board games and listened to programs on the radio for fun. School. Times were tough. Some families couldn't afford to send their kids to school. Books, clothes, and shoes were too expensive. A way with words. ML grew up listening to sermons in church. He learned how powerful wor words can be used to help people understand ideas. When ML was 14, he entered a speech contest. He put his anger about the unfairness of separate rules for white people and black people into words. He made people think. He made them feel. The judges loved his speech, and he won. And in his own words, let, let us see to it that we give fair play and free opportunity for all people. And ML not only grew up in Ebenezer Baptist Church, but he later became a minister there as well. And here is the Ebenezer Baptist Church where he learned the power of words and a sermon a long talk, usually given in church. On the bus ride home from the speech contest, the driver told ML and his teacher to give up their seats to white people. ML had to stand for two hours. He was mad, but he didn't say anything. He knew he could be arrested, hurt, or even killed if he did. And over here, this picture shows white passengers could sit in the front of the bus. Black passengers had to sit in the back. And here, a man attaches a segregated seating sign to a bus in the southern U.S. A student of peace. ML worked hard in school. He finished college when he was 19 years old. He moved to the northeastern U.S. and continued in school. He wanted to be a minister like his father. And he, here is ML. He is the third from the left with fellow students at Morehouse College. And here's a picture of Morehouse College. ML skipped two grades in high school. He started college very early at the age of 15. In 1952, ML met Coretta Scott and fell in love. They got married and moved south to Alabama. There, ML worked as a minister. By 1955, he had gone as far as, as you could go in school. He had earned the title doctor. Now he was Dr. King. And... In this picture, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott 
King in 1956. So there's a picture of them. And this is the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, where Dr. King was minister. Helping others. The Kings moved back to the South to work for equal rights. They saw that not much had changed for black people there. They still couldn't swim in pools or go to school with whites. They still had to stand on buses so white people could sit. In Alabama, Dr. King had a chance to help. A bus driver told a woman named Rosa Parks to give up her seat to a white person, but she didn't get up. Rosa Parks was arrested because she had broken the law. Here's a picture of Rosa Parks, and we're going to learn about her tomorrow. Um, this is the bus stop where Rosa Parks waited in 1955. And over here, we have a white man and a black man drink at separate drinking fountains. Lots of people went to a meeting to decide what to do. Maids, janitors, and other working people rode the buses. They asked people not to ride buses until blacks and whites had the same rules. They called it a boycott. They put Dr. King in charge because he had a way with words. For more than a year, black people walked. They took cabs. They even rode mules to get around. The boycott was not easy, but finally people listened. Black people and white people would have the same rules on buses. Unfortunately, many white people did not follow the new rules. So over here, um, boycott means to stop using a service as a way to protest it. In his own words, always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And here in this picture, we have people boycotting the buses, um, wave to an empty bus driving by. Dr. King went all over the country giving speeches. He talked about injustice and civil rights. He made people think, he made people feel, and he asked people to join him in protest for change. Blacks and whites marched together to protest bad laws. They, were, they went to places where only whites were allowed. A lot of them got arrested. Angry people called, their name, called them names. Sometimes the, marches were, the marchers were hurt or even killed. So here's another word to know. Injustice, behavior or treatment that is unfair. And here's another quote from Dr. King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Dr. King and Coretta Scott King leave, lead a five-day march to Montgomery, Alabama in 1965. Newspapers, television, and radio reported it all. People around the country were mad. They saw how bad it was to have separate rules. One person who saw what was going on was President John F. Kennedy. The president wanted to show that he agreed that rules should be the same for blacks and whites. So he invited Dr. King to visit him at the White House. And here, peaceful means quiet and not disturbed by fighting or arguing. And violence means hurting someone or something. And here is President Kennedy and Dr. King. And um, the president met with Dr. King and other civil rights leaders at the White House. And peaceful protests. Dr. King wanted to make the world a better place. He did this with peace, not hate or violence. People sometimes hurt him, but Dr. King did not hurt him. 
them, sorry. <laughs> um, he fought back with peaceful protest and peaceful words. In his own words, love is the most durable power in the world. Eight awesome facts about Dr. King. Number one, Dr. King and his father were both named Michael King, but his father changed their names in 1934. Number two, once Dr. King was hit with a brick during a peaceful march, he didn't fight back. He kept walking. Number three, Dr. King liked to dance. Number four, Dr. King learned good ideas from a man from India named Gandhi. He used peace, peaceful protests to fight unfair laws. Number five, Dr. King gave uh, 2,500 speeches during the last 11 years of his life. Number six, the statue of Dr. King at his memorial in Washington, D.C. is huge. Its head weighs 27 tons. Number seven, Dr. King told people to love each other like brothers and sisters. Number eight, Dr. King and Coretta Scott King have four children, Yolanda, Martin Luther III, Dexter, and Bernice. Dr. King's Dream. It was August 28, 1963 in Washington, D.C., in the same city where our country makes its laws. A huge crowd of people, black and white, cheered. They had come to stand with Dr. King and protest bad laws. Everyone in the crowd wanted the same rules for white people and black people. So thousands of people gathered for the March on Washington in 1963. And a fact, a draft of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech is still located at Morehouse College. Dr. King's voice boomed as he gave his most famous speech. Called, I Have a Dream. Dr. King's dream was for all people to be treated the same. Hard times. Three months after Dr. King's speech, President Kennedy was assassinated. It was hard, a hard time for the United States, but the next president, Lyndon Johnson, kept working to change the rules. And so here is President Johnson and Dr. King shaking hands. In his own words, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And that is his most famous words. Um, Dr. King speaks at the Lincoln Memorial. And um, words to know, assassinate means to murder an important person. In his final years, the rules did change in 1964 and again in 1965. Laws were now the same for black people and white people, but not everyone followed the new rules right away. For the next several years, Dr. King and many others kept working. Dr. King gave speeches. He planned peaceful protests. He helped others. And here's a picture in 1966, Dr. King walked black children to Mississippi schools that used, used to be all white. In 1968, Dr. King was in Memphis, Tennessee. He was helping black garbage collectors protest for better pay, but angry people still did not want change. A man with a gun assassinated Dr. King. Black and white people around the world were very sad. They had lost a man who made them think and feel. They had lost a man who helped make our world a better place with peace and justice. But Dr. King left, left us his words to remember him by. And Dr. King's dream lives today. So a timeline. 
1929, he was born. 1948, he graduates and becomes a minister. 1952, he met Coretta Scott. They were married a year later, so that would be 1953. 1954, starts work at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. 1962, visits the White House. 1963, arrested at a peaceful protest and jailed for two weeks. Again, in 1963, he speaks at the March on Washington. 1964, he was arrested and jailed for demanding to eat, eat at a white-only restaurant. 1964, awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. 1965, he leads 25,000 people in a march to protest unfair voting laws. 1968, he was killed on April 4th in Memphis, Tennessee. 1983, a new national holiday honors Dr. King on his birthday. And 2011, National Memorial to Dr. King in Washington, D.C. opens. Here's a picture of it here. So, a memorial to peace. You can visit a, a national memorial to Dr. King it is in Washington, D.C. There you can read his words about his hope that people could live together peacefully and with justice. You can also stand next to a 30-foot statue of him. It is called the Stone of Hope. Far from, from far away, the Stone of Hope looks gray, but up close, it, it is really many colors. The colors stand for all the different people in the world, that's because Dr. King stood up for our rights to all be treated fairly. And a memorial is something created to remind people of a person, event, or important idea. And the Stone of Hope is carved out of granite. This color rock is called shrimp pink. And that is it for today. Um, thank you for bearing with me. It's a little bit long, but, um, it has a lot of good information. So, um, I will be assigning a couple assignments to go along with this. Have a great day.